Hello everyone. So the wife has given me a project that finally doesn't involve the house. Basically, she is wanting to give her father a Father's Day gift. And it is something that is going to involve the two projects that you have seen on our channel. Her cricketing and my woodworking. Basically, she is going to cricket together a decorative thing for a bathroom. Gag gift, actually, but one that the family will get. So, while we are kind of taking a break from all of the projects, I figured I would take a moment to use some of the new toys. We've now gotten a planer into the collection. We now have a jointer in the collection. I actually managed to get the bandsaw from out of the garage and down into the basement because it was just too moist out there. Yeah, things were starting to rust and had to get it protected down here. So, now, the shop area is getting closer and closer to becoming a reality. But for today, I found an old piece of oak that we were using to test staining. And I am going to run this through the planer and see if we can just kind of take a layer off. The board itself is pretty much already flat, parallel, whatever you want to call it. So we don't really need to do anything to it from that perspective. Just need to see if we can kind of clean it up make sure the stain doesn't go too deep and if so I am going to try to resurrect this into a picture frame so welcome aboard okay all four sides from the finishing setting are nice and smooth and no detectable signs of any of the stain. So this board is now as good as new. So we're going to see if we can piece together enough stuff here to go ahead and get some 45s cut into that board. So basically what we are cutting out is going to be a 10 by 10 piece of cardboard backed solid canvas. So it's basically a thick canvas board that is 10 by 10. So basically I need about 40 inches give or take and we have a 48 inch board. So what I'm going to do is just evenly cut this board up into four pieces with 45s to go ahead and get the general dimensions going. And then I am going to get the router set up and start routing in all the pieces that we need. I thought about, I thought about actually routing it first and then cutting but there's too many problems that things may not line up 100%. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the first 45 cuts done right now, and then try to go and get it into the router and start getting things routed out. I'm probably gonna use two or three different bits to kind of put some shape to this thing, and we will see what happens. So let's go. Okay, as we said, this is 48 inches. I am going to go ahead and pop a 45 on one end, and then do my best to go ahead and divide it up into equal sections. Okay, four 12 inch pieces on the outside. Let's see what she looks like. Okay, not too big of a deal, but I did sort of forget that I was making two cuts. I was trying to leave a quarter inch gap all the way around to go over the uh, board, but so it wound up being half an inch because two cuts. So it'll still work. If nothing else, this will be a good test run to make sure. Basically the opening is nine by nine. The frame that's going in, it's 10 by 10. So basically half an inch all the way around. I was going for a quarter inch all the way around and accidentally doubled it. But for what she was planning on doing, it'll still work. So now I'm going to go ahead and get these squared up. It was kind of a rough cut. These are now all the exact same size, so now I'm going to go and just go one chop on these to get these all lined to the same size. Some of the other tools on my list are nice 45 squares and all that kind of stuff, but just using my carpenter square, framing square, this didn't turn out too bad. It's not perfect, but for me, very well, I think, good enough for a first-time frame-making project like this. So, I think those dimensions are good enough. So now, 
we want to go ahead and start setting up and see if we can route some designs into these pieces and see what we can make it into. So we're going to start trying to trim these up. The first thing I'm going to do is basically cut in just a flat spot all the way around the four pieces. That's going to be where the frame is going to sit into. I'm actually going to make it just a hair bit bigger so that you can wiggle it. And I am going to make it a little bit deeper than it needs to be because once everything's put together, I'm going to send this thing, the back of it, through the planer just to kind of shave it down a little bit. So I'll use that to kind of get the depth of the overall back down to where it'll hold that one okay. Because it's a little bit thick. Uh, this is easily, I think, half inch wood. So um, for a frame, thinning it down would not be a bad idea. So basically, we've just got a generic old flat bit in here. And let's run these through the router and see if I can do it without losing a finger. Okay, I went and put in just a 45 chamfer bit. I'm going to take the outside edge down just a little bit. So, actually I'm almost tempted just to do the same thing on the inside, and then maybe just a little something down the center. That way I don't have to change out those bits, I can just run them all right back on that again. Something to the center of each one, and call it done. I and mean, this is my very first project, I'm not trying to go overboard. Okay, she is slowly coming together. Now straight down the center with the bit we were looking at earlier. And we're going to call this done, except for sanding and construction. Then we'll clean her up and see what kind of a catastrophe I have built. Okay, so I just relearned a lesson I learned before. When you're using a router bit and you're going through oak it's very easy to burn your bit up as in melt the plastic burn your bit up so that then when you try doing the next piece it just burns it instead of cutting it problem is to keep these consistent it, it was also way too deep like I like the channel look but it was too deep of a channel. So I'm going to try to clean these up and see what I can do. I'm probably going to have to buy a new bit because I've got this groove in this one and the starting of this one, so I kind of got to keep it consistent. So I'm going to see what I can do to repair this. So I think what I'm going to do is run all these. Like I said, remember, I, it was thicker than it needed to be anyway, so I think I'm going to run all of these through the planer and take it down as much as I can and then maybe get a new bit exactly like the one that's in here and then come through and just do that shallower cut that's what I'm kind of thinking is going to happen so let's throw all four of these through the uh, planer real quick and see what we can clean up is I actually like this a lot better it's actually a much better frame still has a little small chamfer on those edges and the groove is now much shallower I will still need to get a new bit and basically rerun these I'll have to drop the height of this just to hit in there a little bit but I think I'm going to be able to save this okay I burnt that bit up but I have a different one here that I think may work a little bit better and I need to go a little bit slower 
So I am going to run through this one real quick and see. Because I think lining the other one up is going to be a problematic thing anyway. I've got this bit. Let me just see if I can clean this up and be happy with the results. Okay, rough draft done. This is the back side that the canvas will fall into. So that fits very well. And this was the final look of the front side. So now, just to assemble the pieces, to start sanding it up and start adding some finish and see what it looks like. Okay, now we're going to start trying to glue this up. I'm using Tight Bond 3, which has a longer drying cycle. In this case, I think that's actually going to be helpful for me in what I'm trying to do. I'm also going to put in some pin nails. But, for the time being, I think what I am going to do is just apply glue to each of the ends, get it into the clamp, clamp everything down, get it lined up where it needs to be, and then give the glue a chance to dry, then remove it and put a pin nail for an added bit of security. Okay, that is glued up, wiped down, so we will let that dry, add some pin nails, and then do some sanding. Okay, so once the glue had dried, we went ahead and put pin nails in each of the corners. Uh, if you've never seen a pin nail, it's basically very similar to a brad nail, but the head is almost non-existent, so it disappears very quickly. Once the pin nails were in, we went ahead and did a light sanding. I believe this was uh, 220 grit or 400 grit. After the sanding was completed, we cleaned it up with denatured alcohol and then used a Minwax gun stock stain. And basically just ran a coat along the entire thing with a staining rag. Once the stain had dried, we came back with a satin polyurethane. Uh, this was also just a mid-wax polyurethane, clear satin. And then finished up with a very light sanding. This is like a 3,000 grit wet dry sandpaper just to just kind of roughen up things a little bit. Then another denatured alcohol coating to clean up any of the dust from the sanding. Okay, now we are adding in the basically the clips 
just marking halfway point on each of the sides and installing a clip. This is basically just a little metal clip with a screw that swivels to hold down the uh, canvas panel. As you see, there's one on each side. And finally, the last piece was to add in a hanging bracket so it can be hung on the wall. And there we go, the completed project. Now to hand it off to the wife so she can do her project.